Hey, well, boy, howdy, boys and girls, men and women of all ages and walks of life. Welcome once again to Randy's Guitar Shop. Thanks, Robert. Slow man at work. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Anyways, guys, as you can see, I've got this Jet guitar. on the chopping block. Now, as you know, I have two of these, a blue one and this one. I prefer this one. I just really like the sunburst feel. I love this pit guard. What I don't love is a few things on the setup. So what we're gonna do for the next couple of days, next couple of issues that I put out, we're gonna kind of examine this thing and check it out. As you can see, I've got my handy dandy um, whammy bar holder upper device. <laughs> And it would be wiser to put just like a credit card in here or something. Uh, I'll try to find something like that for you later. Anyways, what are we going to do? We're going to put on our Tone Ninja. Ninja. Uh, locking staggered tuners. I really like these Tone Ninjas. They're 19 to 1s. And they just... I've had one set that had a few like uh, machining problems. But they replaced it, and I've, I've got them on, all, on quite a few of my guitars, and they work perfectly. As you know, I love locking tuners. And this has got a nice block on it. Nice big block on it. And yes, our pick guard is actually off right now. Hey, my handy dandy fell off. <laughs> Anyways, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to uh, rewire this guy with a couple of new pickups in it. You know, actually, these pickups work quite well, but I'm a modifier. I don't know why. I just, you know, if I get a car, I got to put an exhaust system on it or a new fuel injector. I'm just kind of wired that way. Anyways, and we are going to put a good pure tone jack in here. This is cheap stuff. But these things feel and operate great. So I'm just gonna undo them and uh, put the new pickups in. I'm gonna replace this little itty bitty um, guy, this capacitor with a nice big orange drop. And I like the feel of this switch, so I'm gonna keep it. It's already uh, it got some shielding in there and I will shield this either with paint or with tape. So I think that um, we should get with it and let's do one thing today. What is that one thing? I'm thinking we should do these today. So let's turn this around. Maybe you can see it a little better. And I did, uh, I went over this with my uh, leveler and then I, uh, you know, took the rocker to it and I found a couple frets that are just I mean barely too high because as you know I played this before and demonstrated it right out of the box and it worked quite well. There was no buzzing or anything. But I'm sure this, this bone nut needs a little addressing. And it's got a regular uh, stamp steel string tree and I've got some roller string trees I'll put on it. So anyways, stagger tuners, We actually we won't even have to have a string tree. But then we'll be left with a dilemma of what to do with that hole there. What do you think we ought to do? We'll just put the screw in it probably. But let's see how it turns out first. Anyways, guys, let's um, turn this guy over. No, let's take it off first. Like every good man has to have is a 10 millimeter socket. Hope you guys are having a wonderful and a blessed day today gonna be kind of warm out here so you may not know it but I come out here pretty early in the day because my air, my little puny air conditioner only works so good out here <laughs> when it gets to be over about 85 pretty much the temperature in here is the same as the outside sometimes it's actually cooler outside somebody will remedy that what do you think all right guys like my buddy J-Man just made the discovery, he ended up using these washers to 
get these things down here, those string ferrules to sit up closer to where I needed them to be. You know, the guy's an ingenious guy. You better be watching Jay Man. That's his channel. He is the man. Not only is he a, a fun guy to watch, uh, and he's very knowledgeable about guitars, and he's getting more that way as he moves along in his uh, adventure, but he's also a phenomenal player. Just to sit and watch him play is is thrilling to me. I can't, I don't understand what he does. And he claims he doesn't either, but I know darn good and well he does. So anyways, guys, let's turn this guy over. Hopefully we won't lose it all again. I think this is too big. We're gonna need a teeny tiny screwdriver. We'll see if we can get this one to work. If not, we'll go grab, uh... hey, cool. We don't have to grab anything. These are actually jet tuners. Wow. There you have folks, a an actual branded jet tuner. Isn't that amazing? I'm gonna set this stuff over here for right now. I sure am happy about uh, the new subscribers I've got. I don't have a lot, but I got, I get a couple every once in a while. And it's just a thrill to me that anybody wants to watch this channel. Anyways, guys. That's what we're doing. You know, I talked about this before, but these uh, supposed roasted maple necks on these guitars are just fantastic. Now, luckily, I didn't end up with a uh, punky one like J-Man did. He ended up with kind of a funky, uh, I think it was a Telecaster model, and it was kind of not too good. Lots of weird little problems with it, but so far, this one has been very good. And once I get done with it, boy, it's really going to be good. But I love the feel of this neck. All right. Well, let's just get right into it. And you know, I made a video one time of me putting my staggered locking tuners on a guitar. And you know, I didn't pay close enough attention to uh, the staggerization of them. <laughs> I had to go back, take them off because I had the tall ones down here and then, you know, or they were just kind of interspersed there. That really isn't doing a darn thing. So let's check this out, guys. You got your handy dandy sticker. Now, I don't know if these are put in, you know, from the tallest to the shortest, but I think they are. Yeah, they are. So let's lay those out for you guys and you can see. Here's the two smaller ones, shorter ones should I say. These two are a little bit longer. And then these two are the longest. Wow! Okay guys. This is just so much fun. I just love locking tuners. I know some guys just think they're a waste of time, but ever since I had my first set of Spurzels put on that custom, my first really good custom made guitar by the great, yes, the great Steve Spaulding, I've just loved locking tuners. So anyways, guys, that's enough uh, pontificating on what I like and don't like. Let's uh, get our little washi guys on here the proper way. I think this guitar is going to turn out pretty nice. I hope I didn't kind of goof up by just replacing the pickups just to do it. Like I said, these things work good. They don't howl. They don't screech. I think they got to be potted. But anyways, guys, I'm just one of those guys. And what are we going to do? We're gonna use this guy right here. 
this Aura Pure, Ori Pure humbucker in the bridge. And then these, now this is a full set and I'm not gonna use them all. As you can see, I'm gonna use this style of pickup and I've taken them out and I've looked at them and they look like they're potted. And, you know, they claim they're the, the next best thing from to chocolate milk. And you know chocolate milk is about just the best thing. But that's down the road a little bit. So, let's get started, you guys. Here's the smallest one. Of course, every time I turn this thing over, something falls out. And these holes line right up. Isn't that something? Besides, locking tuners just look cool. But you know what? They do add to the weight of the headstock, which is kind of a bummer. Because that will bring you closer to you-know-what. Good old-fashioned neck dive. But I don't think this thing will be too bad with that. Now, that's just me saying that, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I keep forgetting this guy's a magnetic guy. And since there's already been screws put in here, and we might have to use the old screws. And that's fine with me as long as they fit. You ever run into a problem like that? Look at that puppy. Going right in. We'll leave these just, just a tiny, tiny bit loose. Now, aren't we glad we didn't go throw these screws away? Yes, and I know, I wish I had more, more better ways of editing and cutting things off because I know this can get real boring for people real quick. But this is, this is the real world here, folks. This is what's happening when you put a guitar together in real time. Okay, those are just kind of on there. <clears throat> so what's the weather like over there where you guys live? Pretty nice here. Kind of, like I said, kind of warm. Although we may get a reprieve from that here pretty soon.
So this is living proof of how long it takes to put a set of locking tuners on a guitar. That's if you don't have to cut the headstock out or anything. Because sometimes you end up having to do that. Sometimes on some certain guitars, these holes, these are basically 10 millimeter. And some of the older fenders and stuff like that, and some of the foreign import guitars, they, uh, <clears throat> the holes are smaller. So you got to get a drill out there and do that. And it's best to do it with a drill press. Boy, I'll tell you what, a hand drill, you can really rip wood out really easily. As a good friend of mine just found out a little while back, work on an old Stella guitar. Anyways, guys, let's take a look at that. Yep. So let's take a look and see what staggered tuners look like. As you can see, starting from that end, they just get a little bit bigger until they're on the end. Yep. And they stagger them in twos. These, these ones are taller, it's shorter and shorter. I actually had a set once that every single one of them was a little bit uh, shorter. And I don't even remember uh, what brand that was. It's been a long time ago. Anyways, guys, that's kind of what we did today. That's not that exciting, but for somebody out there that's kind of thinking about doing that, uh, I, I suggest Tone Ninjas. I like them a lot. Now I've got other tuners. I've used Tone Ninjas and about three other brands and all of them have kind of worked pretty good, you know? And these are reasonably priced. They're like 60 bucks or something. And you can buy them, you know, all the way up into the hundreds, you know, for really good Spurzels or, you know, any of those name brand types. I'm just not a name brand type. I do have these hip shots that I ordered that are staggered but they wouldn't work on this guitar because they're completely different. Uh, they've got a plate that goes on the back side and all those little holes in there, they would be disregarded and then you'd have holes on the back side of your neck. Now, you don't want that, do you? I don't think you do. So these have to be used on a different project. Anyways, guys, I think that's gonna do it for me today. Um, that's an awful lot of hard work for a little guy like me to get done. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just going to take this step by step and make these short little videos. Hopefully I'll get uh, all the wiring and stuff kind of done. I'll just leave the very last of two or three wires to solder on. So you don't have to go through the, you know, the sadness of watching me work. Anyways, guys, I hope you have a wonderful and a pleasant and a blessed week this week. Don't forget to pray for your country, whatever country it is. Don't forget to pray for the world, a world in upheaval. Our thoughts and prayers need to go to the Father so we can hopefully uh, get some things going in the right direction. Don't forget to pray for your friends, neighbors, and loved ones that need medical attention. Our thoughts and prayers need to go to the Father to hopefully get these people on the road to being cured and the road to recovery. I love you all for watching the videos. If you enjoy them, please like, subscribe, share the videos with your like-minded friends. And we'll uh, do some fret filing and some uh, some wiring on this here, probably in the next installment. I will see you guys later. Bye-bye. Hey, guys, I'm back with a little bit more information. What I did was I took and I did all these, um, the, the outputs on these new pickups I'm putting in. And I tested the old ones just for the fun of it. I'm still hoping you're having a wonderful and a blessed day. By the way, I forgot to mention last time, that loop is number six on my loop pedal for your listening and dining and pleasure, of course. So it turned out that these pickups, these ones that came in the guitar, are a little bit hotter than the ones that I'm putting in. But that's okay. So we're gonna test them real quick here, just for your, uh, your fun. I wish I had alligator clips for this. These come in at about 531, 532. 
that is the neck pickup, the middle pickup that we are going to use. Let's see what it comes in at. It should be just a hair hotter than that. Let's see. 558. Perfect. And let's test out this little guy that is going to be our um, humbucker for the bridge. And sadly, this humbucker uh, is not, I mean, the wiring is not nice cloth wiring like on the other pickups. This comes in at 870 yeah so that's pretty good five to eight and then this is going to be a little bit more so anyways guys that's going to be pretty cool and these were just a little bit hotter all the way across the board they were like six 650 and about eight something so anyways guys hope that's interesting to you we're still going to use these new guys they are Al Nico's. They're wax spotted. This is an Al, Al Nico and it's wax spotted. I will see you guys in a bit. Bye bye. Well, hey, boy, howdy, boys and girls, men and women of all ages and walks of life. Welcome once again to the building side of the garage at Randy's Guitar Shop. Thanks, Robert. Anyways, guys, uh, we've moved quite along. I've got these pickups installed the new ones the Or Pure Humbucker and the two single coils. Uh, they seem to be operating. We'll just turn that on right now real quick for a minute. See what happens. That's on. Those two are on. That one's on. Those two are on. And that one's on. So what are we doing right now? Well, thank you for listening to that exciting demo. As you can see, I've got the neck kind of going here and uh, just covered up these pickups a little bit. I just got through doing my whole fret level thing with my fret leveling device. Everything's good. I went all the way across. You know what's really funny? I don't know if any of you guys run into this out there also, but every once in a while you'll do the whole thing. You'll get them all leveled out with your little rocker here and... Um, you come back the next day and you discover there's a high fret. What's up with that? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to give this a final little polish. And yes, I am kind of polishing the whole fretboard also. This does have a finish on it. I kind of wish it didn't, but that's the way it is. And uh, I'm just going to live with that. These are pretty nice frets. They're not perfect. And they're definitely not stainless steel. But, you know, that doesn't make a big difference to me. I haven't had any. And by the way, that's number 21 on my loop pedal for your listening and dining pleasure, of course. And I do hope you're having a wonderful and a blessed day. It's going to be a short video because I'm stacking it up with some other ones. This is uh, 4 aught or 000, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> steel wool. This is great for polishing frets and fret boards. See, the thing I don't like about a finished fret, fret board is that, you know, all the polishes or anything like that, linseed oil or anything you might want to put on it, it's really not doing anything to the wood. It's just sitting on top of the finish. But hopefully this finish will wear off here uh, within the next three, four hundred years and uh, then it'll be good to go. As you saw earlier, I have my tuners installed. So all that's going to be good to go. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Just uh, showing you that uh, we've got her hooked up. And if there is any problems down the road, we'll address them. But I do like the finish, especially on the back and the headstock of this neck, it's really nice. 
uh, very satin. And uh, with that being said, I think we're gonna call it a day um, because like I said, I'm stacking this with a couple other videos. I don't want it to run too long. You guys have a wonderful and a blessed day. Uh, don't forget to pray for your country, whatever country it is. Don't forget to pray for the world, the world in upheaval. Our thoughts and our prayers need to go to the Father for healing for the world. And don't forget to pray for your friends, neighbors, and loved ones that need medical attention. Our thoughts and our prayers, once again, need to go up to the Father to hopefully get these people on the road to recovery. I will see you guys later, probably on the other side of the garage here in a couple days. Love you all for watching my videos. If you enjoy them, please like, subscribe, uh, hit the share button, and give me a thumbs up. I will see you later. Bye-bye.